Good afternoon guys. Today I'm going to be showing you how to operate the S650 Bobcat. And to start off with, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of some of the pre-op stuff. First pre-op thing you want to do is you want to come over here and there's a hydraulic few, there's a hydraulic level gauge over here. And if it's in the green, then you're fine. If it's anything below the green and then there's red that says add, you want to add it. Um, okay, so next thing you want to do is you want to come back here to where the engine is. You'll pull a lever down here, and this opens the door. Um, here's your diesel. You can Your gas gauge is in there, like always. Um, we don't really need to add anything. Down here, we're going to check the oil. Good thing to do before you start a ve any vehicle, or run any vehicle. Um, as you can see, that's, it's low, but not too low. I mean, if it was below that line right there, then yes, you definitely need to add some. You do that right there. Um, Next thing we need to do, we don't use this at all during the summer. This is just something so to show you, like, because we had a hard winter this year. Um, this is called the heater cord. It goes into the engine and keeps it, it keeps it warmer. Yeah, you um, have antifreeze in it, but that it's just an extra precautionary. It's easier on the engine. So we're gonna want to plug that, throw that somewhere. Throw that over there. Shut this. Shut this door. And make everything back. Um, one safety precaution we do do here at Chicago is this. We put this through these two handlebars because if someone was to just run in here real quick and that back door is already open, then they see that and they say, oh, oh, hey, we need to undo that heater cord. Okay, so this is the basic controls. Um, this run, this yellow button here, I'm not going to be able to tell you what that is later, so I'm going to tell you now. That is, that turns on all your gauges as you can see. Um, on your gauges you have your oil, battery, RPMs, your hours, and then if some bobcats in like construction sites have passcodes on them, this is where you type in your passcodes. Um, and once you um, are in your seat and stuff, you'd hit the start button, but we're not there yet. Over here we have your hours, your gas, or your fuel level, and your battery, and oil level, and these red lights down here, park brake is on, your bucket is locked, because we don't have traction override because it's not on. Um, then your seat belt's on, and then you have your headlights, aux, HF, aux, and then information. Down here you have your park brake, which isn't on, if we're not on a steep slope. You probably should have it on, but we don't. We're right, gonna start off, before I show you guys how to run this, um, these are your hydraulic hookups for, like, let's say an auger, that you're gonna attach to this. We have a grappling bucket that you can attach, because we do a lot of wood hauling in the winter. That's just a wonderful piece of equipment. And then we also have this bucket, we have another bucket, and then we have a forklift. Then we have a small little backhoe thing. So that's just a small little piece of information. Now we're going to actually get into the giant doing this. So one more piece of advice. This, it has two um, flip levers on it. This is an emergency escape. I mean, if you were to flip this or anything, you can't get out this or the door's jammed, which we don't have it on now. But you'd flip these and you push it out and then you can crawl out. But you gotta be careful because stuff back there is hot. Before you start the bobcat, well, in any vehicle you should do this. Before you start any vehicle, you should put your seatbelt on. But one other thing you have to do with the bobcat is you have to put this lap bar down. And if you don't do this, you cannot do anything. You have two ways of controlling the bucket. You could have, you have two foot pedals down here. They're a pain to do because if you get dirt down there, you can't do anything. But then you got these handy man little things. You got joysticks. They move. This one moves your arms up and down. You move it side to side. And this one moves your bucket up and down. So you saw um, me moving this earlier, and now I'm going to tell you what I actually did. So to go forward, you push both these forward, just like a zero turn mower that you drive for your dad. And to go backwards, you pull them backwards. This stick here controls this side of the wheels, 
this this side and this stick controls that side. And to turn, you push one forward, you pull back on the other. safety precaution guys is you and the driver only move very little but on the outside you just gotta be aware because your bucket your forks will move very very fast and I'll prove this later and uh, later after I take this bucket off and put the forks on. Hey guys, Now we're gonna learn how to take off a bucket those two levers down there um, control pin that holds your bucket on and up here we have the control for it the um, this button right here, the bobcat wedges up and down, that controls which way your levers go. If you want to take it off, you hit up. If you want to take it off, you hit down. And that's the basic controls of taking a bucket off. The reason I like hand controls is I grew up playing video games and driving my dad's zero turn lawnmower and honestly this thing turns a lot like a zero turn but it's honestly just a matter of opinion on what you like.
Honestly, I've been I haven't been driving tractors nor skid steers long, but I have made made a couple of conclusions. This piece of equipment is amazing for spreading gravel, spreading dirt, moving dirt quickly. I mean, I mean if you get sent outside with a shovel and had to scrape a pile of dirt, you're, you're gonna be out there all week. With this thing, it's gonna take you maybe a couple hours. I mean, with hay bales, this isn't the best equipment because you can't see a hay bale as big as your door. And that's honestly what tractors are better for. I mean, I honestly love this thing more, but tractors have their advantages. It's been a long day, but it's been really fun. Um, one thing I would, I'm gonna do before I put this thing up for the night is fill back up a fuel because whoever uses it next, it might have been a time crunch and I don't have time. It's always just a courteous thing to do. And be careful, this is really, really hot. Goodness, this thing is hot. When you're filling up this, when you're filling up the bobcat with diesel fuel, you want to turn your bobcat on, not on, you want to turn the run on, but turn all your gauges on and watch how much fuel you're putting in, because there's no real way to tell how much you're putting in this thing. It's been a really good day at the Bobcat. Not the best at it, but it's been a really fun day.